this video I wanted to talk about NAS migration. So this would be uh, moving your drives from one NAS uh, to a new NAS. There could be a few reasons for this. Uh, the most popular one is usually people have a, an existing NAS, um, they've had it for quite a while, they're buying a new NAS and they just want to move their existing drives that are working just fine um, into a newer, perhaps uh, more powerful or even a larger NAS. Um, so this is uh, the, the process of doing that. So here what we've got is our compatibil compatibility for NAS migration page. Uh, to find this, you just hover over the product uh, option at the top of our website. And over here in the resources section is the compatibility for NAS migration that you can click on. And it brings you to this page. And there's a few drop downs you've got to fill in um, just to make sure uh, that the uh, route that you're going to take is going to work or not if they're compatible. So the first thing you have to choose is the operating system. So I'll be switching drives today uh, from a TS-230, um, sort of one of our lowest cost NAS, up to uh, the TS-251D. So they're both running QTS, so I'm going to choose QTS. Uh, you can't switch between operating systems uh, using this method. It would have to be a complete restart. Uh, the, the drives would have to be erased because the file system changes. But if they're both QTS, um, usually you're going to find two that are compatible. So the source NAS, the existing NAS, is the lower cost uh, TS-230 here. So I'm going to choose that it's a two bay. And I'm going to find the TS-230 option from the list. So let me scroll down. There's the TS-230. And the destination NAS being the TS-251D. So I'm going to again select the two bay, go down and select the TS-251D. So just toward the bottom. There it is. So here I've got a tick. It says I can migrate the hard drives from the source to the destination um, so there'll be no loss of data during the move and most of the settings will also transfer across. There is a little statement here that says before you uh, migrate your drives ensure you read the notes below. So a quick summary of these notes. Uh, you can always go to this page to read them yourself or pause the video if it's clear enough. Um, basically the idea is that both NAS should be on uh, the most up-to-date version of firmware that they can be. Um, the both NAS must be turned off for the drive migration from one to the other um, so that no um, RAID rebuilds get initiated, things like that. Um, most of the settings will transfer, but there is a bit of information here about some that won't. Um, and also, if you've got any paid for licenses on your QNAP, make sure that those are transferable licenses. Not all the licenses are transferable. Um, so you may end up having to, to buy some licenses again in some cases. Um, but there's uh, just a couple of extra warnings here. If the destination NAS has less RAM than the source NAS, not usually a problem. Um, some applications might not be supported, like snapshots and virtualization station. Um, just a small uh, statement down here that if you have legacy volumes, so these would be volumes created originally on a very, very old uh, version of our QTS software, and anything basically before QTS 4, um, then it's very important to make sure you back up all your data before doing this. Um, so there's just a few notes there. So we'll jump straight into doing the uh, the drive swap here. So here is a TS-230 that I've got set up, and there's a couple of setting changes. Um, I've got a little bit of data in the public share here, so a few test folders. I've got a couple of firmware files. Um, we can also create a couple of things in here. So if I create a user, for example, so let's create a, uh, a YouTube user. So we'll say there's the YouTube user. Uh, we'll do a password of testing123, see if that works, testing123, and then we'll create that. Um, so we're going to have that user created so we can see that we've got the admin and YouTube. So once I swap the drives over from this NAS to the other NAS, things like the users you've created, data that's there, shares that you've got, uh, they will all transfer with the drive. So the settings uh, that you have in the QNAP, even if you were to change things like the wallpaper background here of this interface, um, the, the layout of the icons, things like that will all transfer. So those settings are synchronized to each of the drives uh, for when the change happens. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, pause the video here for a quick second while I uh, shut down both of these NAS. Once the NAS have been shut down, um, I'm then going to take the drives out of the TS-230, put them into the TS-251D and power it back on and that's where we'll resume the video. Uh, the reason I've got them both powered on right now is really just to make sure that the firmware version between the two is the same. So we can see here on the TS-230, it's running 4541723. And if I come over here, 
I can see at the top there that the new TS251D is also running the same version of the firmware, which is an ideal scenario. Sometimes the older NAS may not be able to get a firmware that's as new as the new one, but just make sure it's on the absolute latest that it can be before attempting this. Uh, so I'll go away, shut down the NAS, um, and then I will come back uh, once I've got the NAS booted up and uh, we're booting into the new NAS. So these same two drives will be moved over uh, to the TS. Uh, 251D, which has a more powerful CPU, uh, more RAM, um, more capabilities. So we'll we'll come back once that's uh, once that change is done. Okay, so now we're back. So what I've done now is I've moved the drives that were in the TS-230 and I've put them in the TS-251D. And although it still says TS-230 here, this is actually the TS-251D. The reason it says that is this is the name of the NAS. And when I set up the other NAS, I'd called it TS-230. So even the name of the NAS has come across with the drives and changed them on the new NAS. So what I'm going to do now is log in for the very first time using the same username and password uh, that I had before. The IP address has changed because my DHCP server has given out the same IP that the TS-251D had before. So it's not the same IP uh, that the TS-230 had, the, the older NAS. Uh, so here, what I'm seeing here is that there's still some services starting, but everything's done. I haven't had to do any wizards or anything like that. Everything is still booting up as normal. Uh, just to prove this is the TS-251D here, let me go to the system status section. We can see here that although it's called TS-230, it is now the TS-251D. We can change that name if we want, but we can see now we've got some more RAM available. We've upgraded um, from an ARM-based CPU to an Intel Celeron. Um, it's only been booted up about six minutes, so services are all started. Uh, but that's uh, all up and running. So if I go to the users section, we can see that YouTube user that I created earlier has transferred across with the drives. And if I go to the file station and the public share, uh, we should still see that all the data is there. So we've got the three test folders and the two firmware files uh, that I copied before. There is really nothing else to do except uh, shut down both NAS take the drives out of one, put them in the other, turn the new one back on. Everything after that first initial boot will be back to how you had it. Um, and as I said, even if you'd change the desktop wallpaper, uh, most of the settings will transfer across. Uh, just have a read at the notes section at the bottom of the NAS migration webpage, just to see some settings that may not apply uh, when you're swapping from one NAS to another NAS. Um, so for example, not all NAS have uh, two LAN ports, Some the new NAS might have more network ports, 10 gig ports that you're linking. If you set a static IP address on LAN port 1 um, on the old NAS um, and you're using a 10 gig on the new NAS, well that might be LAN port 5 for example. So some things might need a little bit of tweaking once it's been moved over, um, but largely all the settings will move over and especially in the case of a TS-230 to a TS-251D, uh, both two bays, um, everything is largely been swapped over because I haven't got any extra apps installed here. Um, but that's the process of doing a NAS migration. Hopefully you found that useful. Um, it's really, really simple to do, um, especially if you can make sure the firmware versions uh, are largely the same between the two units. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please do let us know in the uh, section down below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks a lot. Bye. Hi guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, then please do like and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or you want to get in contact with Craig or any of the team, then we do have a dedicated YouTube email address and you can find us there on YouTube underscore UK at QNAP.com. So until next time, thanks for watching.